back in school, I was known as Efia Nyakun Ijeni. Um, I was a red printer. I graduated from Holy Child School in 1996. Um, presently, I am a high court judge stationed at Second D. Thank you. Um, back in school, I was in H2. Um, H2 was predominantly a general arts class, so I read English literature, English and French as my elective subjects. Um, I did very well by God's grace. I got good grades, so I proceeded to the University of Ghana, Legon. Um, in Legon, ours was a four-year course because we're coming from the new system. So in level 100, we read general courses. I think I read Swahili, psychology, philosophy, name them, yes. By God's grace again, I had good results and proceeded to the law faculty. As a matter of fact, there were about 500 of us who applied for the law faculty and they only selected 25 of us. I quite remember there were two other Hobsons with me. I mean, we were in the same class, H2, Mary and Cecilia. So we all proceeded to the law faculty level 200. And even at level 200, um, it wasn't that easy for us because there was this system called the baptism of fire, where originally 120 students were selected, but at the end of the year, 30 students were supposed to be dropped. So you had to justify your inclusion at the law faculty. So we still had to justify why we had to re read law. And by God's grace, we did very well. We were selected to read LLB, and the remaining 30 read BA. So we proceeded to level 300. And by God's grace, we passed out for, I think I had, I had a second class upper um, at the university. I proceeded to the law school and I was called to the bar in 2004. Right after school, I was just tired of learning law. So I, ha I was just tired of the phrases and everything. So I gave myself a break, went to London for a year, worked for a year and came back. So when I came back, I did my national service at the Attorney General's office. That was in 2005. In 2006, I was employed by the Ministry of Justice and I was posted to the Prosecutions Division as a prosecutor. So from 2006 to 2014, I worked at the Attorney General's office as a state prosecutor. And as a state prosecutor, principally our core business was to prosecute cases, prosecute persons who had come into conflict with the law basically and to also advise the attorney general on whether to um, prefer charges against accused persons so that was what i did primarily before i joined the bench in 2014. so i joined the bench in 2014 and as a second court judge and i was posted to kumasi in 2016 i left to the United States of America to read my master's um, degree program, which was also basically in criminal law. So in 2017, I came back and in 2018, I was promoted to the high court. So presently, I am stationed at the high court second day. I consider my job as a judge to be a calling from God. Um, as a matter of fact, before I joined the bench, I never had any inclination to join it. I had been a lawyer for several years and it had never dawned on me that I could have a career as a judge. I just, it was just suddenly, just one day, I just had the desire that I needed to join the bench. Prayed to God about it and got a green light. So I really consider this job as a calling. And you see, God is the ultimate judge. He cannot come here and judge as men. So he has delegated that responsibility to us judges to be able to dispense justice amongst ourselves. We have set laws for ourselves, so we should be able to um, dispense justice in accordance with the laws that we have set for ourselves. So I don't consider this job lightly. So one of my core values is to treat all men as equal, regardless of who you are, regardless of whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whether you are well connected, Justice has to be delivered. At the end of the day, the bottom line is I need to deliver justice. So that is one of my core values that I hold dear. I also, cons you know, judges are sometimes seen as corrupt. I mean, it's an institution that is seen as corrupt. I, one of the things that I want to bring to bear in that um, sector is for people to understand that there's actually justice or justice can be delivered in this country. 
So in my own small corner in second D, that is the, how, do I, how would I put it? That is what I would want to portray, I mean, to the general public. So I try to be very clear, very honest in my dealings. And I'm, and honestly, I'm grateful to God that till date, just like Samuel would call the lady and say that if anybody, if he has collected any bribe from anybody, that person should come out. I can boldly say today that if anybody has, if anybody has collected anything from me or I have demanded anything from anybody to influence my decision, that person should come out. People consider me as a very honest. As a matter of fact, one of my branding is that when people see me, they consider me to be very honest. And whether I make a mistake or not in my delivery of judgments, they know that that is my opinion. And if they disagree with me, they can go to the Court of Appeal and further proceed to the Supreme Court. That, that would be their business. So one of my core values, again, is integrity, honesty, being able to portray the bench as dispensing justice. Even though I know we've had in, in a couple of years, we've had very bad um, incidents of bribery and corruption. So that has been one of it. One of also my core values is hard work. I mean, without hard work, you can go nowhere. And this job too is hard work. You need to listen to people, listen to their cases, go back home, research, try and write up a good judgment, try and deliver the justice that you are sought to deliver. So without hard work, it is impossible to make it in this sector. I also consider the God factor. For me, I'm, I'm a very good Christian. And, I believe that I am where I am because of what God has done. I cannot leave out the God factor. So I consider God to be the source of my everything. So it has been one of my driving, how would I put it? One of the things that has driven me to always stay connected to God. And I believe that my work is a bit, I won't say dangerous in a way, but you see, there, there are a lot of people looking out for you. Litigants are looking out for you. Lawyers are looking out for you. Your clerks are looking out for you. If you don't have the God factor, I mean, they will take you wherever they want to do whatever they want to do with you. So at the end of the day, I see God as my protector. God as the one who gives me the wisdom to do or dispense, to gives me the boldness to even dispense justice. Sometimes your judgments may go contrary to what some powers may want you to do, may not be in favor of whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to be bold to deliver certain decisions that you think ought to be delivered. So at the end of the day, for me, the God factor to play a very important role in my life. 25 years from now, I hope to be at the Supreme Court. Probably I may have about four or five years to retire. So I hope to be at the Supreme Court. I hope to be branded as a very competent, a very righteous judge, a judge who made the laws, judge who dispensed justice and um, I also hope that um, more that I also hope I know that in 25 years time there will be more women judges than men because it has started it has started of late the intake of women is almost at par with that of men so 25 years down the line yes I believe that more women will be joining the bench than men and I also hope that 25 years from now more Hobsons will be joining the Presently, I don't see a lot of options on the bench, but I hope that in 25 years time, we have a lot of options on the bench. Holy Child School, thank you once again for all you've done for me. I wish you a happy 75th anniversary. Action, not words.